بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد الله جل جلاله has granted us this Quran this book which is the kalam Allah the book of Allah سبحانه وتعالى it is a constitution it is a charter for life people who practice on it and make qadr then even from animalism and barbarism they will become not humans but greater than farishtas and if left then it will make angels those that are noble and high into devils and shayateen so effort needs to be made and the ulama say al-ghaflatu sartanu nafs when a person is negligent and ghafil and uh, oblivious of Allah and Deen then that is the cancer of the nafs if we worried about diseases then the greatest most destructive disease is this disease وَسَمُّ qalb, and it is the poison it is the venom if we're talking about contagion then the worst contagion is the contagion of the heart وَجَالِبَتُ الْمَسَائِبِ and it will draw, it will summon calamities and عَذَاب وَأَتْعَسُ سَبِيلٍ لِسَرِقَةِ الْعُمْرِ and it is the most destructive road and route to deprive one of life it will snatch, it will snap away life so غَفْلَتْ negligence, disobedience its destructive nature needs to be instilled in our heart and Quran is there to clean, it's a polisher, dhikr is a polisher, tilawat is a polisher, ibadat is a polish of the heart. Ibn Qayyim rahimullah you say, inna dhunuba jarahatin wa rubba jurhin wa kafi maqtalin that sons are injuries, every guna you commit and perpetrate is a slash of a sword, it's a bullet and some of these bullets and injuries will result in death. It will kill the soul. It will kill spirituality. So this taqwa, this abstaining, making tilawat of Quran, we are in the fadail of taqwa, but the niyat of Quran, the target of a believer is to get to that. We must discuss abstaining from halal, not only Halal and haram and muba permissible because a muttaqi is cautious. Ari Aju Farooq from Sakka Rahmatullah was once having tea by somebody's house. A three year old child was brought, the children, you know, yes, has read Buzruk, let's make salam to him. So the pair, uh, father brought uh, the young girls and Hazrat just put his hands <clears throat> on their scarves. He never made salam, he never touched them. So the people were surprised, says Hazrat. Uh, so he said, No, Hazrat Masullah Khan Sab Rahmatullah used to say that this is the salam for young girls. So how vigilant, how prudent, how cautious they were. The Muftiya in today's Zamana in the Fitna say, even if need be a daughter in law from a father in law. Hijab parda, mother-in-law, son-in-law, hijab parda, if there's fear of fitna. This is what is permissible, forget the brother-in-law, sister-in-law, no question. Keep family ties, na'udhu billah. Cousins, you break in family ties, you need to speak to them, we grow up with each other. What doka, what deception, what darkness is in the heart? We are openly breaking the awamir of Allah, the command of Allah. Domestic workers, the youngsters are at home alone, father and mother are walking, working, employed, busy, no time. And the son is busy with the worker. We have, this is not fairy tales, it's incidents that have come to us, 10 year old boy, 11 year old boy, 12 year old boy. Because they're surfing in the darkness of the night. We've given them the cell phone. We've given them internet. They get ideas. Who are they going to fulfill their ideas with? 
and they got access to your money, pay her. So nafs and shaitan is what everybody in, in the high voltage boxes there used to be signs before danger, khafari, ngozi. This is, this is detrimental, high voltage, life current. We never know when this current of Iblis will overcome a person. He'll perpetrate it haram which he never thought and dreamt he would do it. We in, when that current comes live, we in for a shock in dunya and akhira. A, a young girl came for a mas'ala to Mufti Saab that my husband took my mother-in-law to the doctor. The father-in-law was alone. I took food for him when I entered the room. He tried to fondle me. Is it permissible to go back to my husband? Does Hormat Musara fall? Does my husband become haram? Do I become haram on him? So the person who decides to go in Parda in today's Zamana and era is a fanatic, you're an extremist. They say, oh you're breaking the family ties, you're breaking the unity in the family. The zamana where we find excuse to dissuade people from deen, dissuade people from amal. What an era! A kafir's instruction is more important than the amr of Allah. We can wear a face mask, we design the masks, we perfect the mask, but the hijab is ignored. We sanitize our outside with chemicals. But we cannot sanitize our lives from guna and ma'asiyat. The men folk go to corporate meetings. The women greet, do you, do, you, do you fear Allah and say sorry? It's against my religion. We were in Jamaat in one country. To find a single woman in Parda was rare. That was the halat in that country. So we went for gusht. We went to one house. So Muslim lady came out and she started greeting. The Jama'at, obviously they didn't know it was a norm there. So the first Saturday it was they greeted her and then just started giving her dawat. So after we finished and we were leaving, he said, you know, uh, we have to win the hearts of people. We have to win the hearts of people. Bring them close to Allah. Your compromise has taken you so far away from Allah. You worried about bringing people to Allah. Shaitan took you away from Allah. Nurani hijab. In, in, in the name of good. So we worried about making the creation happy, not making the creator happy. So we was worried about the ambition of people. What are the opinion of people? Not what is what Allah's opinion. Ulama say, La tasha ila ahadim big Don't worry what people say, what people are thinking. See what Allah's opinion of you is. Is that sufficient and adequate? Yes. My Allah's thoughts about me is important. Rather break yourself, break the hearts than breaking the command of Allah. Sometimes we leave small children at home. What Nabi Alayhi Salam has instructed them. That murul awlad Muru awladakum bis salati wa hum abnau sabi sinin. When they're seven years, enjoin salat. Wadribuhum alayha wa hum abnau ashrin. And when they're ten years, beat them if they're not performing salat. Wafarriku baynahum fil madhajia. And separate them from the madhajia. Imam Shawkani in his kitab has mentioned that. وَفَرِّكُوا بَيْنَ الْغِلْمَانِ وَالْجَوَارِ لِسَبْعِ سِنِينَ That even at the age of seven, brothers and sisters shouldn't be sleeping together. Children shouldn't be sleeping together. They shouldn't sleep with you in your beds. Ibn Abidin is mentioned, and this is the call of ten years old, إِذَا بَلَغَ السَّبِيُّ عَشْرًا لَا يَنَامُ مَا عُمِّهِ وَأُخْتِهِ وَإِمْرَاتٍ he should not sleep, the youngster, the boy should not sleep with his mother, with his sister, any female. 
In the incidents we got 11, 12 year old boy with his sister, 7 years old, they, he breached, while well, he went onto the phone, he went to the website, he's seen this, now he's experimenting, they were watching together, and they went to the experiment. Our 8 year old daughters were chased, uh, losing the chastity in our own homes. So we need to check our every move, our motive. Where am I moving in life? Where am I going in life? Hassan Basri, you say, "Ma darab tu bi Basri, wala natak tu bi lisani." I haven't looked, I haven't spoken, wala batash tu bi yadi, I haven't grab, wala nadu ala qadmi. I haven't moved. Hat andur ala taatin, wala maasiatin. Is it the command of Allah or not? Is my Allah happy or unhappy? For if I can taat, taqaddam tu. Allah will be happy. I moved forward. I rushed. وَإِنْ كَانَتْ مَعْسِيَةً تَأَخَّرْتُ مَا إِلَّا وَلْ بِدَسْبِلِيزَ I ran away from there. So we think this is small. It's okay. It's permissible. The thing that we, the fact that a person thinks this is small shows our smallness in eyes of Allah. In the dunya, the people of the dunya are after you. They'll never leave you. Dunya is such, its nature is, there's no point where a person is not a target. Whether it's between a husband and wife, we target in each other. Or outsiders, people, friends, family are jealous of you. Thieves, anytime. Even if you're on the book and you're doing everything, there's a receiver of revenue behind you. Speaking about that, there was a, a, a gym and they wanted to do, create some desire for people to come, etc. to there, so they made a competition. And they found the strongest person and they said, okay, uh, we, whoever can beat him, they will get a $10,000 reward. So they knew they're not going to lose, so they gave a great reward. So he would squeeze a lemon until the juice came out and there was nothing left. And, it, and they told everybody who can squeeze more juice. So the weightlifters, bodybuilders, gym, uh, nurse fanatics, they, all of them came, they tried, they couldn't do it. And one day a very thin, scrawny person, he had thick glasses, a polyester suit, but a soft voice said, uh, is it possible for me to try? So the audience, the crowd, whoever was there started laughing at him because you're looking at the person, looking at we, we tried, we, we the bodybuilders, we the Mr. Universe. He said, no problem. Jokingly, they gave it to him. So the first uh, bodybuilder himself squeezed it, nothing left, then they gave it to this man here. And as he clenched his first Six drops fell into the glass and the crowd went wild. So they gave him the prize and then they asked him that, uh, what do you do for a living? Are you a, a weightlifter? Are you a bodybuilder? He said, no, I work for the IRS. I work for the receiver of revenue. I work for SARS. Squeeze you till the last. Dunya won't leave you. That's small. Was nafs amaratum bisu wants to take us down. Shaitan wants to take us down. They're going to extort us. Dunya deception to the highest level. So the taqwa such a taqwa where Allah has promised blessings from the heavens. Walau anna ahl al qura amanu wa taqaw. They brought iman, believed, and had taqwa, protected themselves. From every aspect, the displeasure of Allah. لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ We would open up the blessings from the heavens and the earth. Imam Raghi says, what's this barakat? وَلَمَّا كَانَ الْخَيْرَ لِلَّهِ يَزْدُرْ مِنْ حَيْثُ الْعُسْ That this goodness that comes only from Allah, there's nobody that can explain barakah. La yusa wa la yuhsa. It cannot be explained. It's unexplained. It cannot be comprehended. Likulli ma yushahad minu. Whether it's you can see it, whether you can understand it or not. Huwa mubarak wa fihi baraka. Why? Because it's from Allah. There's no explanation. For example, Imam Nawi rahmatullahi alayhi ni shara muslim mentioned that's why baraka in food. He said, when Allah puts nourishment in that food, when, when you are protected from haram, you are eating 
halal food, that's barakah. Where you get the strength, that's barakah. Where that food gives you thought, where you obey Allah more. Where that food is such that it is little but, but is sufficient for a lot. كُلُوا مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ وَعْمَلُوا الصَّالِحَةِ The ulama have said, what is barakah? جُنْدٌ خَفِيٌ مِنْ جُنُودِ اللَّهِ It is an army from the armies of Allah. يُرْسِلُوا عَلِ مَنْ يَشَّعَ A few are favored, a privilege. فَإِذَا حَلَّتْ فِي الْمَالِ أَكْثَرَتْهُ When this barakah comes to wealth, more than we can imagine. فِي الْوَلَدْ أَسْلَحَتْهُ In your children, you'll get the best children. وَفِي الْجِسَمْ قَوَتْهُ Your body will be healthy, strong, you can do. فِي الْوَقْتْ عَمَرَتْهُ And time, your time will extend. It will last. وَفِي الْقَلْبْ أَسْعَدَتْهُ And the heart, the heart will have contentment, it will have happiness, it will have everything. So, this barakah is promised on this ta'a in obedience. Ya thubutu al-khayri li-layfi shay. It is the establishment of the divine goodness, blessedness in anything. And when it comes in, in anything that's letted, it increases it. When something is a lot, it becomes beneficial. So Alamah have, have explained that uh, this barakah itself, Imam Bukhari in his Adab al-Mufrad has mentioned uh, Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu saying, Ajibtu al-kilab al-shah. I'm amazed about the dogs and sheep. Inna shaa yudbahu minha fi sana. Kada wa kada. So many times we slaughtered and slaughtered and slaughtered in sheep all the time. That's the sheep. And they give birth only one or two lambs. If you look at the, the world record for lambs, it's seven or eight lambs. And وَالْكَلْبُ تَضَعُ الْكَلْبَةُ الْوَاحِدَ كَذَا وَكَذَا وَالشَّعْ أَكْثَمِينَ That a dog gives five to six puppies in a letter. And the record was 24. So one is being slaughtered, the other one not slaughtered, one only given one and two, the other one five or six. He said, this is barakah. This is barakah. So we have all the azbab to have more time, but the barakah has been snatched in everything. We've got food, we've got ovens, we've got stoves in our food preparation, microwaves, ready-made food, fridge, freezer, preservatives, order your food, ready at your doorstep, drinks, everything ready-made. In travel, planes, first class, business class, private jets, then trains, then cars. From the speed to the comfort to being autonomous to electric. Compared to the horses in the bushes, in the jungles, giving them food and feed, and what you can load. Roads are tad. Movement of goods, we got ships, courier services, communication, phones, call, faxes in old days, emails, texts. Farming has become advanced and easier with the technology. Manufacturing has become advanced. Even our comfort, sleeping on palm leaves in the olden days to a temper bed, pen ink, they used to have ink pods. Now we've got, forget pens, we type in, printers, photocopiers. Those days, Qurans had to be handwritten. Accommodation, engineer to our comfort, and aircons, underfloor, taps, geysers, medical advancement, dentistry, optics, medication. In clothing, ready-made, only they had diapers, we had to wash the fabric. So one is barakah in dunya, one is with regards to barakah in akhirah, deen. Barakah in dunya, Allah showed sahab. Hazrat Abu Rehran once, Nabi Alayhi Salaam asked him that, what do you have with you? He said, a little bag with a purse in it in a few days. Nabi Alayhi Salaam said, okay, give me those dates. He made dua and he told Abu Rehran, do not open this bag, do not turn it upside down, do not empty its contents. And leave what is inside as it was. So when you want, put your fingers inside, take it out. Abu Hurairah said, I kept this bag tied with a belt around my waist. He said, Wallahi, whenever I was hungry, I would put my hand into it. 
take out food and eat. I never looked inside, I never counted, I never opened. I followed the instructions of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. Then in the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, I, I, I used it. Two and a half years khilafa. Umar radiallahu anhu, ten years khilafa. Then the time of Uthman radiallahu anhu, I was enjoying these dates. And on the assassination was Uthman radiallahu anhu, it was Masini disappeared. So he said, Lin nasi hammun, wali hamman. People had one grief on the shahadat of Uthman radiallahu anhu. I had two griefs. Hammul jirab. وَهَمُّ شَعَدُّ عُثْمَانِ That my purse disappeared and Hazrat Uthman anhu, was assassinated. So what barakah can we comprehend? Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam's time plus two and a half years, maybe 15-20 years of taking as much kajur as you want out. That was barakah. What a treasure. The amal for today is to give in charity what we are able to do. Nabi alayhi salam was asked, Ayyu sadaqati afdal, which is the most virtuous sadaqa? He said, Sir ila fakirin, that to give secretly to a poor and wajuhdum min muqil, and whatever you have to give that. So the little bit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to give that, may Allah give us. Tawfiq to understanding and the reality of making amal wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.